Hey there, how's it going? Well, it's been asked of me once again why I don't use Linux. Many, many people have asked this, and I haven't made a video about this in a while. And to some people, I'm going to be repeating myself from some videos I've made in the past, but I just want to reiterate for people who, who don't know, who haven't seen my past videos on this. Okay, the main reason why I don't use Linux is because of a lack of software, a lack of good software. So many, not all, but so many open source titles, which are the primary things that are available for Linux, so many open source titles, the people who work on that software take the attitude of, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. It doesn't matter if there are other programs that people have to pay for that do, do the job so much better in certain areas. Um, the people who work on open source software are like, well, no, this, this option is available. Um, we don't care if it's antiquated. We don't care if it doesn't work that great. It works, so and it's free, so shut up and don't complain. Um, and then, yeah, there are new options that get added to these things on top of the old options that are shitty, but keep adding more and more and more on top of it. And eventually the interface becomes this mess where nothing is really truly unified. Nobody has this unified vision of what that software should be. So, you know, you got this really old stuff, feels like, you know, 1999 to 2002, with a bunch of crap put on top of it. That's pretty much the nature of most open source software for uh, that you find out there. Not all, not all, because there are exceptions. Like I use Audacity and I use open broadcaster software. Audacity does have some of that kind of attitude, but at least you can do the things that you want and it doesn't take that many steps. Once you take the initial steps, all the stuff after it aren't really, it's, it's not that rough, right? So... But yeah, open broadcaster software, that's a, that's a very good piece of software. Um, they may have some issues once in a while, and they don't, they don't make it a priority to fix things that aren't really that important. They, they think the underpinnings are more important, and that's cool, right? But if Adobe decided to make uh, their creative cloud available for Linux, I would probably switch. And then I'd use Windows to make music with because, unfortunately, VST instruments are not available for Linux. Not even really VST effects. They have the, their, their own set of, of standards. I forgot what it's called. Um, for effects, but the, you, don't, you don't have software instruments on Linux. You don't have those, and and without without the software instruments, I don't have I you know I mean what's the point in a digital audio workstation when you can't make any music with it? I mean, am I supposed to? Oh, let's just look around and find some samples and, and make songs based off of samples instead of actual software instruments. No, that's all right. Uh, um, that's really limiting. So, you know. I would then use Windows for uh, as digital audio workstation and use Linux for everything else. Unfortunately, though, I've not been happy with how Linux, the, the available flavors of, of GUIs available for Linux, are they're not keeping up. They've went into that same mindset of building upon something old. Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And then they have these... There's things they put on top of the old. Um, GUI is available for Linux. I like, okay, the uh, uh, Unity as the GUI, right? Unity, they never added the ability to hover over one of the, the the icons and see, oh, this is what's running, and you can you can click on one of them. Okay, and they never gave you a preview for that. Um, and they never added it later. You know, Unity is the, the closest thing that comes to what you can, the way that Windows is set up now. 
Okay, I think the Windows setup for the taskbar is superior. Um, I don't like the Windows XP thing. I don't like to use something that makes me feel like I just stepped back into 2002. You know, I just, I'm not a fan. I know that there are some extra things that you can add on to whatever GUI you happen to have. You can add some things onto it that give you some more options. But in order to put anything into those you know, alternate taskbars, you can't just drag something over to it and have it work. No, it's time to type it. Let's go into a text file and, and edit, edit some text files and save that and then type in a command to make it uh, use those things. And I mean, just everything's a pain. Everything's a pain. Another thing, you know, for, for my particular situation, uh, the video capture card I use. I use an Elgato HD60 Pro card and there are no drivers available for that for Linux. You can't use it on Linux. I don't have the kind of money that it would be required to get the kind of card that I could use on Linux to, to do this sort of thing. 60 frames per second uh, input. Um, you know, I can't do it. So that's kind of out too. Now, if if drivers became available for this video capture card, I would consider trying some, you know, trying to work with, uh, there, there, is a, there is one decent video editor for Linux of, uh, out there. It doesn't have nearly as many options as, as Premiere, but, you know, there's a halfway decent one available, and, I, and I'd consider using that if I could use my video capture card. But if I'm stuck with having to, on Linux, where I would have to record with the camera itself, and then record the, you know, have the, the mic be a separate, you know, record that, you know, uh, through Audacity or whatever, and then combine them with the video editor, I, I'm sorry, I would I would not be willing to spend the time that it would take to do, like, video responses. It's just, just video responses are not worth it when you have to go through that. They're just, they're just not worth it. It's not worth my time. Um, I would prefer my time going into doing creative things with the way the video looks, which is what I've been doing with Premiere. And I'm thankful that Adobe has their subscription uh, service. Okay, it allows me to be able to 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 use their software legally. I mean, this is the first time in my life, honestly, this past year is the first time in my life uh, that I've not had any pirated software on my machine. First time, you know, and subscription software is what has allowed for that to happen. I initially was against the idea of subscription software, but then, you know, I, I, I realized, wait a minute, this, this isn't a bad idea. My mother uses Adobe products as well, and so we split the cost, uh, the monthly cost for this, and uh, it works It works out. Another thing, though, that I don't like about Linux, and there's another reason why I just don't like to use it, is if there are any problems that I'm having, uh, some it can it can take months to get an answer to something, and I'm stuck using forums, forums filled with people. I'm sorry, who are more snobbish about Linux than most Apple people are about Apple products. And the snobbishness is much worse than the way the snobbishness is on on Apple fanboys. Because it's like, the attitude is, well, you know, you just need to not be so lazy. Yes, I should want to spend, make do 20 steps to do something I could do in one step on another operating system. Otherwise, I'm lazy. I mean, Linux forums is the equivalent of someone telling you, you know, Linux help forums are the equivalent of someone telling you that, um... You know, if you want to do uh, edit this photo, you know, just use Microsoft Paint. Sure, you have to spend a lot more uh, uh, more steps at doing edit, you know, editing than you would on Photoshop. But if you spend enough time, you can do it. And if you don't, if you're not willing to do that, you're lazy, and you're pathetic. You know, I I don't I, I've never seen that kind of uh, attitude towards people on uh, you know Apple forums. Or Microsoft forums. I've never seen anyone be treated that way on any of those places ever. But you see it all the time on Linux forums. 
You see it all the time on open source forums. All the time. I'm not a fan of that. I'm really not. You know, we, we get people get treated like shit enough on platforms like uh, like YouTube. I'm not going to use an operating system that the only way to get help is to be treated like shit. Sorry, I'm just I'm just not having it. So those are the reasons why I don't use Linux. Um again, you know, if if Adobe decided to start making uh, software for Linux, I would consider it. I would consider it. Um, if uh, there was some sort of way that I could use uh, VST instruments on Linux without it being unstable, you know, that that would probably help too. Now see, here's, there's another thing too. You can do a lot of customization on Linux, tons of customization, but the more you customize, the more unstable the OS becomes. If you use the OS stock in whatever uh, distribution, you know, that's standardly available, that's popular, it will be a solid operating system. It will be very stable. But once you start doing customizations, the stability starts to go out the window. The most unstable operating system I've ever used is when I've tried to customize Linux. And then to troubleshoot those problems, months, months and months and months. Oh yes, let's let's put everything on hold because this keeps crashing. Well, no, let, let's just make it go back to bare bones again and don't bother with doing any of the customizations and then and then what's the point? So, lots of reasons and I just thought I'd share them. Thanks for watching.